Down the hole hammers are precision tools. To make sure that your Mac hammer runs at peak performance, regular routine maintenance and service is a must. Halco hammers are very easy to service with the use of a few simple tools. But here are a few tips. Always work safely when dismantling down the hole hammers. Halco's range of hammer stripping benches is designed to make dismantling easy. The hydraulic version is fitted with a hand operated pump. This gives the effortless, smooth power needed to break the top and bottom joints so that the chuck and top adapter makeup assembly can be removed. To complete dismantling, remove the bottom snap ring and also the top one where fitted and then you can withdraw the piston from the cylinder. The non-return valve assembly should be removed from the top adapter on models where it is an inbuilt unit. All the parts should then be degreased and cleaned, ready for inspection and servicing. Inspect the top adapter threads for wear and cracks. Clean the threads with emery cloth or stone. Measure the non-return valve spring and check its length against the wear limit details in the Halco operating and service manual. Check the rubber sealing area of the non-return valve. The valve should be replaced if either wear or damage is present. If the hammer has a makeup ring, measure and check it against the wear limit details in the Halco manual. Look for heat scores on the air distributor finger, a sign of poor lubrication. The finger and the air distributor body should be cleaned with emery cloth. Check the inside of any snap rings for wear and replace them if necessary. Heat scores on the outside of the piston are also a sign of oil starvation. Clean up with emery stone. Inspect the piston top bore for heat scores also check the piston oil ring grooves for burrs and clean with emery stone. Check the piston striking face for cracks and indentations. If evident, replace the piston. Inspect the diameter of the piston foot valve bore, which may have been reduced through constant impact, leading to premature failure of foot valves. You can remove a small decrease in bore diameter with a hone, otherwise the piston should be replaced. Inspect both ends of the cylinder for cracks, usually caused by over-tightening or by excessive feed force during drilling. Inspect the cylinder bore for heat scores. A hone attachment will renovate the bore. On the relevant hammer models, make sure there is spring tension in the bottom spacer. If not, replace the spacer. Then check the top and bottom surfaces of the bit retaining ring assembly. There again, 
Emery stone or cloth will restore the surfaces, or the assembly should be replaced if it's damaged or badly worn. Check the thickness of the chuck spacer ring against the wear limit details in the manual. Inspect the chuck reaction seat for damage, usually caused by insufficient or excessive feed force. Inspect the chuck splines for wear and clean up with emery stone. Replace the chuck if the splines are badly worn. Inspect the chuck threads for wear or cracks and clean up using emery stone. On every service, always replace O-rings and shims dependent on hammer model. There's a range of service kits for most of the Halco hammers. Remember, worn parts in a hammer cut down its performance and cost the operator more time and money. It's important to check everything on a major service, especially the piston diameter. Wear limits on hammer components can be found in Halco's Mac Hammer Operating and Maintenance Manual. Now, a few tips on reassembly. Different hammers use different parts, as you can see from the spares list. Always check it against the hammer you're rebuilding. The cylinder end, which is stamped with the serial number, goes near the top of the hammer. With the hammer horizontal in the vise, insert the bottom snap ring. If the hammer has a bottom spacer, slip it into the cylinder. Place the chuck spacer ring over the chuck. As a temporary measure, drop the bit retaining rings into the lower end of the cylinder for safe keeping. Screw the chuck into the lower end of the cylinder and hand tighten it to complete the assembly of the lower end. Place the piston into the top of the cylinder. Check that it's fitted the right way round, with the striking face towards the drill bit. Now to assemble the top of the hammer. If there's a top snap ring needed, don't forget it. Fit the O-ring onto the air distributor and put it in the cylinder. On models with steel makeup shims, slide the makeup spring with a thicker shim than the one taken from the hammer onto the non return valve housing, ready for insertion into the top adapter. In the case of models with plastic makeup shims, the makeup ring should be placed onto the non return valve housing with the existing and additional shims and fit the unit into the top adapter. Don't fit the O-ring yet. Screw the top adapter into the cylinder, just hand tight. Measure the gap between the top adapter and the cylinder. Compare it to the minimum and maximum makeup gap in the manual. Now, remove the top adapter, non-return valve housing and makeup assembly from the cylinder. Adjust the total thickness of plastic or steel shims to ensure the correct makeup gap and then reassemble.
On the models with steel shims, ensure that the makeup spring has been assembled in the same order as when it was taken out of the hammer. Place the non-return valve onto the makeup unit. Fit the O-ring onto the top adapter, depending on hammer model, and grease the lower threads of the top adapter. After greasing, slide the makeup and non-return valve assemblies into the lower end of the top adapter. Screw the top adapter with its O-ring, if fitted, into the cylinder and tighten fully. On some hammers, the non-return valve assembly is placed into the upper end of the top adapter and retained with a circlip. On others, the complete unit is screwed into the lower end of the top adapter and then backed off so that it seats up to the circlip. When the hammer has been assembled, refit the bottom protective cap and stand the hammer upright. Pour one third of a litre of airline oil into the hammer to protect it during storage. If the hammer is fitted with a non-return valve, depress the valve to allow the oil to reach all the internal parts of the hammer. Refit the top protective cap and assembly is complete. During reassembly, always ensure that all rubber components such as O-rings have been thoroughly coated with silicone-based grease. This is of particular importance with rubber springs fitted to shock absorbers, and these should be thoroughly coated with grease before fitting to the shock absorbers. Full details on hammer servicing and maintenance are found in Halco's DTH Operating and Maintenance Manual.